Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you. Welcome to our chapel and our uh, Christmas morning service. Um, we have some folks online. We have some folks here in the chapel, so I'll be looking back and forth between you. Um, but mostly I will be hoping that you'll join me in the joyful uh, celebration of the birth of Jesus the Christ um, and uh, the adoration that comes after the birth, the adoration of Mary, as you can see on the painting on the altar, Mary and the newborn Jesus. And also um, the adoration of the shepherds, which is what we'll talk about today, somewhat, we'll talk about a lot of things, but somewhat. So uh, let's begin by um, gathering ourselves into the space that you're sitting in, gathering yourself into the spirit of this day. Uh, some of you might have come on last night with me to um, bring in the new day and the, the hour of the birth of Jesus as the, the dawning of the light. And so if you uh, slept with that energy, that might be feeling quite nice to you this morning. But we, we can uh, recognize that in the world, uh, Christmas can be quite busy and it can be um, distracting from the deeper meaning of this season or the deeper elements of the season that have us go very deep inside and then come back hopeful and full of energy for the return of the light. So I'm gonna hit my temple bell a couple of times. You can take some deep breaths and get yourself centered and remembering the reason for the season. And now let us lift up our hearts and greet our creator. Most high and glorious God, Master Jesus and Blessed Mother Mary, saints and angels and helpers of our souls, we welcome you into this chapel and into the sanctuary of our hearts. We thank you for all of the divine intervention and support that we have in this life. We thank you for helping us to remember you, to remember ourselves as one with you. We call upon your spirit now and your peace which passes understanding to be with us in this service, to be with us in our soul, reminding us of our greater self that is incarnated here to bring light into the world, the light of Christ restored to us on this morning, this solstice week, this celebration of the birth of Jesus the Christ, the return of the light in all times, in all traditions remembering the hope, the joy, the faith, the love, the truth of the light. We welcome it now into our being. We welcome it into this space. We thank you for remembering each of us and calling us home to love. In your holy names, Jesus and Mary, we pray. In the name of the creator, the mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to start this morning just by reading the, um, the birth of Jesus and the adoration of the shepherds from uh, the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the emperor, from Emperor Augustus, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee of Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. Joseph went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver, and she gave birth to her firstborn child, whom she wrapped in bands of cloth and laid in a manger, because there was no place for, him, for them in the inn the shepherds and the angels. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of God stood before them and the glory of God shone all around them and they were terrified. <clears throat> but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good no news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of angels and heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which God has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they <clears throat> made known what had been told to them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of Luke. So one of the beautiful things about this time of year in the Christian tradition is that <clears throat> Mary was a um, humble girl. Joseph was a carpenter. The shepherds were watching their sheep at night. They were just common people, common people that God made known to them that this event was happening. <clears throat> that was the birth of Jesus the Christ, who came for a particular mission. And that mission was to bring light to the world, to bring consciousness and love and peace and the hope for um, the possibility of heaven being in the earth, of us remembering that we are made from the stuff of heaven. And Jesus spent his life <clears throat> with the support of Mary and, and Joseph, of course, um, learning and then teaching and living and healing and doing all manner of miracles outside of the um, the tradition that he was raised in, the Jewish tradition, and um, got a lot of heat for it, because he was a carpenter too. Who are you? Who are you, jo uh, Joseph? Who are you, Jesus? Who are you married to say such things that my father and I are one, the kingdom of heaven is within me? Um, uh, the kinds of things that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that shook people up because Jesus wasn't a man of import, you know, he wasn't a man of, uh, of uh, letters, he wasn't a high priest, he wasn't any of the things that <clears throat> his tradition said, these are the ones that you believe. He was a man who had experience, and who had a mission, and who followed his mission, <clears throat> and those who followed him in general were people like him, fishermen, and tax collectors, and um, people who were not um, important in their day. And so <clears throat> I wanted to read a little bit to you today about uh, a woman named Maria Valtorta, who is, uh, was a nun in the 1940s, and she was bedridden, and she had visions of Jesus and Mary, and she wrote them in a series of books called The Poem of the Man-God. And in this particular passage, she's talking about her own experience of Jesus. And I thought this, was, this would be a, a, a good thing to think about on the day where we're celebrating something awesome coming into the world, but not through the normal channels that the world would offer such things. It's not a um, you know scientific um, uh, exploration or um, or a, a new formula or something that can be proven or something that can be um, reasoned out. Let's say, and so instead. Um, what happens is that the way the spirit moves is that everyday people have extraordinary experiences of the spirit that convince them that there's something bigger going on here and maybe I want to know about it. And so <clears throat> Maria Valtorta was uh, uh, an invalid who um, had many, many uh, visions and, um, and wrote them out. And then this one in particular is, as she's starting to talk about the adoration of the shepherds, it's about her experiences of having Jesus come to her personally. 
So as mystics, we we uh, practice, we do practices that help us tune into our inner self, to our higher self, to God, to the beings of Jesus and Mary, to the saints and angels and other beings who are here to help us wake up to our true nature as God beings. As Jesus said, know you not that you are gods. And so our, our tradition says, do the things that help you remember that what Jesus said was true, regardless of who you are in the world, regardless of where you stand, <clears throat> where you come from, um, whether you have credentials that say you get to say that or not. So here's what Maria Valtorta is saying. I am writing in the presence of Jesus, of my Jesus master. He is here for me, all for me. He has come back after such a long time, all for me. You will say, how? You have been hearing and seeing for almost a month, and you say that he is with you after a long time. I will reply once again, telling you what I have already told you several times, both by word of mouth and in writing. There is a difference between seeing and hearing. And above all, there is a difference between seeing and hearing on behalf of other people and seeing and hearing all for yourself, exclusively for myself. In the former case, I am a spectator and I repeat what I see and hear. But if that gives me joy, because they are always things which bring me joy, it is also true that it is, so to say, an external joy. The joy is a bad expression of what I feel so clearly, but I cannot find a better one. In brief, just imagine that my joy is like that of one who reads a lovely book or sees a beautiful scene. One is moved, enjoys it, admires its harmony and thinks, how lovely it is to be in the place of this person. Instead, in the latter case, that is, when I hear and see for myself, then it is he and I, Mary and I, John and I, alive, real, true, close to each other. Not in front of me as if I were watching a film being shown, but beside my bed, or moving around my room, or leaning on pieces of furniture, or sitting or standing like real people as my guests, which is quite different from a vision on behalf of everyone. In a word, all that is mine. And Jesus is here today in actual fact. He has been here since yesterday afternoon in his usual white woolen garment, which is rather ivory white and is so different in weight and shade from the magnificent one which he wears in heaven and which seems to be made of immaterial linen and is so white that it seems to be woven with yarn as clear as light. He is here with his long tapering fingers, which are white verging to old ivory, with his handsome long pale face in which his dominating sweet eyes of dark sapphire shine between his thick brown lashes, sparkling with blonde red reflections. He is here with his long soft hair, which is broad, brighter blonde red, where exposed to light and darker in the deep folds. He is here, he is here, and he is smiling at me while I write about him. As he used to do at Via Reggio, and as he stopped doing as from the Holy Week, causing all distress, which almost became a fever of despair, when in addition to the grief of being deprived of him, I was also bereft of the comfort of living where at least I had, been, had seen him, and I could say he used to lean there, to sit there. Here he bent to lay his hand on my head and also where my relatives had died. Oh, unless one has experienced that, one cannot understand. It is not a question of pretending to have all that. We know very well that there are gratuitous graces and that we do not deserve them. Neither can we expect them to last when they are granted to us. We know that. And the more they are given to us, the more we lower ourselves in humility, acknowledging ourselves as, as, miser as in misery as compared with the infinite beauty of the divine, with the divine wealth which bestows itself upon us. But what do you think, Father? Does a son not wish to see his father and mother or wife or husband? And when death or a long absence prevents them from seeing their dear ones, do they not suffer? And do they not find comfort by living where they lived? And if they have to leave that place, do they not suffer twice as much as they lose also the place where their love was reciprocated by the absent relative? Can those who suffer thus be reproached? No. 
And what about me? Is Jesus not my father, my spouse? Dearer, much dearer than the dearest father and spouse. And that he is such to me. You can judge by how I behaved at my mother's death. I suffered, you know. I still weep because I loved her, notwithstanding her character. But you know how I got over that difficult hour. Jesus was there, and he was dearer to me than my mother. Shall I tell you something? I suffered, and I am suffering more now because of my mother's death, which took place eight months ago, than I suffered then. Because during these last two months, I have been without Jesus for me and without Mary for me. And also now, if they leave me for a moment, I feel more than ever the desolation of being a sick orphan. And I fall again into the deep human grief of those cru cruel days. I am writing while Jesus is looking at me. And therefore, I'm not exaggerating or distorting anything. In any case, it is not my custom, and even if it were, it would be impossible to persist in it while he is watching me. I have written this here where it is not my habit to do so, because with regard to Mary's visions, I never interpose my poor ego, as I already know that I must continue describing her glories. Was her maternity not a crown of glories every moment? I am very ill, and it is burdensome to write. And afterwards, I feel extremely weak. But in order to make her known, so that she may be loved more, I disregard everything. Are my shoulders aching? Is my heart giving in? Am I suffering with a racking headache? Is my temperature rising? It does not matter. Let Mary be known, beautiful and dear, as I see her through God's kindness and hers. And that is enough for me. So later in this chapter on the adoration of the shepherds, we get to see a similar experience of the humility of people who were going about their business and something appeared to them that was extraordinary, that was extra sensory, that was uh, miraculous, that was life-changing. They see a star, they see an angel who says the Christ is born. The heavenly hosts come singing Hosanna and say, go to Jesus. God makes it, makes it known that this birth is, is uh, important to the world and sends God's messengers to let people know so that people will go and rejoice and bring solace and comfort to Jesus and Mary who are doing this mission that they have to Jesus and Mary and Joseph who are doing this mission that they have of bringing this particular child to come and teach what he has to come, has, has come to teach. And so the shepherds were shepherds. They were the poor people, the farmers. And yet they were overwhelmed by the beauty of their firsthand experience. And so they followed. They went to the manger. They brought things that they had, milk and sheepskins and things to offer because they were given the divine intervention of knowing something outside of our normal way of knowing. And so Maria Valtorta had those experiences. So I have had those experiences. So many of you have had those experiences of the spirit showing up just for you, just for you, just in the way that you needed with signal graces, signs and wonders, apparitions and visions and um, dreams and experiences that open the heavens and remind us that we're more than what we seem to be, more than what the world goes about acting as if we are. And in most churches, most Christian churches today, there will be a celebration of the birth of Jesus, which is do him, a celebration that he came, hallelujah, Come, let us adore him, Emmanuel, God among us. But Jesus didn't come to be adored. He didn't come to be um, celebrated. He came to do the mission of waking us up to our nature as God beings. And so, although we celebrate this day, 
because he came, because God only knows how the consciousness of humankind would have evolved without his coming. And of course, not only his coming, there are many beings that have come to earth, embodied and taught the things that we needed to hear in different places and different times. But Jesus came to take on the sins of the world, to take on the mistakes, the karma, the karma of the world. It's kind of a big job. And then he um, came to clear the way so that our own karma would be washed away so we could see more clearly. And when or if you've had an experience of the presence of Jesus or Mary or an angel or other being that convinces you that you are beloved, that you are a being imbued with the spirit of God, that you are like Jesus, one who came to be Christed. As we know, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is the title that he came to bring the energy of the Christ to the earth, which all of us have access to. He came to establish a Christed generation, not a Christian church, not the crazy things that happen in the world in the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on that. Lord, have mercy on how that's been twisted and turned. But the reality of the Christ among us and the Christ within us and the responsibility and the joy of acknowledging and finding that part of us that is the same Christ mind that is it was in Christ Jesus, the same spirit, the same oneness with God, the same light of being. And so if you have experience of those things and you have a relationship with Jesus either Jesus as the baby coming to do this mission that is painful sorrowful and hard or Jesus the savior who has restored you to yourself then this is certainly a day to celebrate hallelujah Jesus thank God that you came Thank God for Mary who gave her life and said yes to the angel to bring you to the planet. Thank God for Joseph who cared for you both and made sure that you were able to fulfill the mission. Thank God for the ones who followed and told the story, imperfect as it may be. So there are lots of people in the world who don't uh, celebrate Christmas in this way. They they uh, are tuned into the material world, the consumerism and the, um, the gifts that are meant to celebrate love, but often are empty of love because they're not consciously celebrating love. That's sad, but it is um, better than no love, I suppose. So we recognize that not everyone has woken up to the reality because maybe they haven't had the experience to convince them that God is love and that we're here for the purposes of love and that Jesus and Mary came along with many, many other souls across time to help wake up human consciousness, to help evolve us into beings who remember that we are also one with God, that we are God beings who have the power to manifest what we want in the world, the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. And so on this Christmas day, in celebration of Jesus and Mary coming, in, in gratitude for having some understanding or some experience of that truth, that is what we celebrate. And when we come to the chapel, this chapel that has been loved up and prayed up and filled with uh, experiences of spirit, then we can bring to the chapel our hope, our burdens, and recognize that this is a, a place, a portal, a place for transformation, a place where burdens can be lifted up, 
and replaced with a blessing of a sacrament or with a blessing of the peace which passes understanding, the blessing of an experience of the presence of God, the presence of Jesus and Mary, the presence of angels and saints and beloved deceased ones, the chapel, the pyramid, the temple, the cathedral, all portals for having those experiences so that we are convinced and that we can work as uh, intermediaries like Jesus and Mary in the world by bringing that knowing with us wherever we go and by loving in their names and with the love that moved through them and with the determination and the sacrifice that comes with saying yes to love, which means that there will be people in the world who don't like that, who call you names, who think you're crazy, who um, try to diminish your experience. Those are painful and sad things to have happen. But when you have an experience that's so true in your being, there's nothing and no one that can refute it, even if they break your heart trying. And so we hold fast to the treasures of the spirit. We hold fast to the treasures of our own transformation, knowing ourselves as we do, knowing what things were covering up the truth in us and how we were relieved of them when we came to the table, when we came to the sacrament, when we came to in prayer and asked for help and received it, received blessings and graces and miracles of healing and transformation. And we store those up in the treasure chest of our heart so that we remember them when times are tough. And the, angel, the angels came to the shepherds and the shepherds made their way to the manger. And then they went back to their life as shepherds. And they continued to have to live in the cold with their sheep at night out in the, in the pasture or in the barn. They continued to do the things that shepherds do. But they were no longer just simple shepherds. They were shepherds who knew a higher truth that made them blessed, that made them holy. Not holy in the sense of, aren't they good and pious? Holy in the sense that they knew something that was more true than what they knew before. And it brought them peace and joy and wonder. And they lived their lives sharing that in any way that they could. Maria Valtorta lived her life even in pain, writing the story that was given to her. And today's story, receiving the blessing of having Jesus show up to her in her room, leaning on her furniture, touching her head, making his presence known and his love known. So on this Christmas day, you might take a few moments to write your list of experiences things that have convinced you that God is love and that, that uh, the light is real and that truth is possible, that it is here for us, that the energy of the heavens can be brought into our selves and into our world for the glory of God and the upliftment of humankind, to relieve suffering, to bring peace, <clears throat> peace which passes understanding, which means, as Maria, Maria Beltorta said, when my mother died, it was sad, but I had Jesus with me, so I wasn't quite so sad. <coughs> Excuse me. So all the things that happen to us in this life can be mitigated by the presence of the Spirit that comforts and encourages and um, um, holds us while our hearts break, while things happen that we wish didn't happen, while we grieve losses. And the spirit stays with us so that we can continue to march on, holding that light anyway, loving anyway, being present anyway, regardless of how many times we get knocked about by the things of the world, by people who are unconscious and don't remember love, by situations that are less than ideal and less than heavenly. We hold, <clears throat> hold fast to our treasured knowledge 
And as we live that way, others can feel that, they can bask in it, they can be reminded, they can remember themselves, they can be in the joy and peace that comes from remembering. And then pretty soon a, a group gathers together and they can celebrate together. And that's a blessed thing. The shepherds could celebrate together this experience. <laughs> All of them knowing what they saw. And what they heard and the impact of being in the presence of this one that was born for this particular mission. And if you continue to read Beltorda, they come back around later in the story. Some of them who lived long enough come back around and Jesus remembers them, remembers them and Mary remembers them. And so we too are part of the story. The ones that remember <clears throat> Jesus and the ones that Jesus remembers. So as we do on a Sunday morning, we do the sacrament of communion. And communion is a high vibrational blessing that opens us to the spirit, the movement of spirit. And it is a transformative um, experience if we are open to having that experience. So you can look into your heart, into your mind, maybe with gratitude for the experiences that you have had and offer gratitude in exchange for the blessing. Maybe you have a burden on your heart that is left. And even today on the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, he wants to take our burdens. He wants to move his energy into the earth, lift up the heaviness so that the things that are heavy aren't quite so heavy. Mother Mary wants to bless with her graces. And if we say yes to that, as she said yes to God and to her mission, then we get to have the great blessing of receiving graces, mercy, compassion, courage, comfort, all of the things that Jesus gets called wonderful counselor, Lord of light, Lord of all, holy peace, mighty one, God among us. He gets to be our comforter for all the things that are heavy in life. And so the sacrament of communion, which we do every day or we can do every day, is our daily bread, our daily reminder that Jesus is there with us. The daily reminder of what's in our own treasure chest of experience. The daily reminder that always and in all ways we have access to the beauty of love from the heaven realms into this realm for the purposes of our own peace, our own transformation, and that of all of humankind. <coughs> and that is why he came. Hallelujah. So if you want to uh, prepare yourself in your heart, I will prepare myself to do the sacrament of communion and you can use this time to tune into the energy of the Christ that is in and around you, the energy of God that is in and around you, the energy of love that is in and around you, and let yourself soak in it. Let yourself um, allow its vibration to convince all parts of you that it is real and it is for you in particular, each of you, each of us in particular.
O Mother, Father most glorious and Christos most high, through the great masters of earth, Jesus and Mary, we beseech thee to absolve us of all past error and misgiving. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord of earth, thou grantor of all prayers, it is my word that this bread shall be transmuted into the flesh of thy body and thy mind. Being transformed, I commend it in your memory for the forgiveness of sins. Glory unto the Creator for its power. Glory unto the mediators for their life. Glory unto the Holy Spirit for its nature. For thus is transformed the essence of earth and heaven. Amen. Into the blood of our most glorious Lord of earth, Jesus Christ. O God of creation, through thy holy word, and through the power granted unto me over the life and the death of creation, do I commend myself unto the transformed wine and blood of our Lord Jesus for the raising of the consciousness. And may now the Holy Spirit descend through it and infuse it with life eternal. Amen. All souls gathered here partake of the body of Jesus and know that by the fruits of your labors, you are absolved of all past error and misgiving. Thus you are a partaker of the life through Christ Jesus. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the creator, the mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
drink of the blood of Jesus, which is infused with the essence of the great Christos above. Now go forth and let your light shine before all. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the creator, the mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Ones, we thank you for the blessing of this sacrament and for this glorious day. We thank you for the lives of Jesus and Mary and Joseph and all those who incarnated to restore us to your love, to help us remember ourselves as beloved, as instruments and conduits of love. May we shine ever more brightly the truth of our true nature as we go through our days and through our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus and Mary. Thank you for calling us home to you. We pray to be worthy servants of love. We pray to love others as you have loved us. May this world be surrounded by love, be transformed by love, be raised up, that we might live in that more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible, that more beautiful world that you came to show us. May we remember. In your holy names we pray, in the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth now and shine the light of Christ wherever you go. May your heart be a light with love, with joy and with peace in this holy season. Be blessed in Jesus and Mary's names. You are the creator, the mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Mary, Merry Christmas. <laughs>